柱をまるで超えたおるようにハンターは、ハンターは、ハンターは、ハンターは、ハンターは、ハンターは、ハンターは、ハンターは、ハンターは、ハンターは、ハンターは、ハンターは、ハンターは、ハンターは、ハンターは、ハンターは、ハンターは
and gets an eerie feeling once inspecting his surroundings. With large statues standing before them, they wonder what they are supposed to do inside of this area. Eventually, someone finds a mural with writing on it, telling them to revere God. Following this, Juhi informs Song that the huge statue before them moved its eyes. Sung looks but is in disbelief that something that large could move around. Then suddenly the doors close, trapping the group inside of the area. One of the hunters decides to exit, not wanting to participate in whatever is going to happen, but once he arrives at the door, the statues begin to move. In just one chop, the D-rank hunter gets sliced in half, making Sung realise what the situation is. With it originally being a D-rank gate, a D-rank hunter should never be able to get one hit. Sung thinks if these statues can move, then maybe the big one can too. He gazes upon it and is terrified once its eyes move like Juhi told him they did. Sung remembers all of his past dungeons he has participated in, always being on the brink of death. Despite being mocked for how weak he is, Sung has always survived. Thanks to this constant battle for his life, Sung is able to recognise when there is an incoming threat. He shouts for everyone to get down, protecting Juhi from the giant statue's incoming attack. He realises that there is no way to defeat the opponents, and this will most likely be his last dungeon. In a panic, everyone starts wondering what they should do to stay alive. Song heads over to Sung and thanks him for yelling out the incoming attack. During this, Sung notices Song's arm, it being completely taken off. Song informs Sung that in his life as a C-rank hunter, he has experienced B-rank raids. In all of these, however, there was nothing this terrifying, making this gate potentially a A-rank or even S-rank. While Sung faces this live threatening dungeon, however, his sister Gina talks with her friend who was at the rank evaluation test the other day. She tells herself that she could probably do a better job than her brother, him only being an E rank. During this, however, another one of the C rank hunters within the dungeon attempts to escape, him being confident in his speed. As he runs, the large statue vaporises him instantly, showing running is not an option. Sung then gets an idea and shows he isn't completely worthless within the dungeon. He stands up with determined eyes, showing he hasn't yet given up on his life. Once he stands up, he lowers his head once again, the statue stops attacking, showing the first rule written on the statue. Revere God means you need to keep your head down. Sung then orders the other hunters to bow down to it, causing the statue's expression to change. With a creepily smile, it causes an uneasy feeling for some of the hunters, making them wonder if that was really the end. Once the hunters get up after bowing down, the statue begins to move, advancing towards the hunters, with the next rule being praise God, one of the hunters decides to try and lead the others on what to do. He gets down on his knees and prays to the statue, forcing it to smile even creeper. Following this, the statue crushes him like a bug, moving on to the next hunter. Everyone starts running around, not wanting to get caught by the statue. One of the hunters runs to the side near a knight statue and is sliced in half. During this desperate situation, Sung thinks what to do, eventually realising the contents of the statues. With some of the wielding instruments, he instructs the others to go to one with such. Song arrives at a statue, and it starts playing a tune instead of attacking them. Once Sung gets to a statue with Juhi, he informs her to stay there while he heads to another one. Despite him being a hunter, he is still only E-rank, making his speed the lowest of the lows. The large statue throws him to the side, forcing him next to a statue with no instrument. Sung quickly evades its attack, but is forced on his legs, crawling to the instrument statue. The larger statue catches up and gets the best of Sung, stepping on his leg and destroying it. Sung, however, makes it in time to activate the final instrumental, causing the statue to go back to its chair. Unsure how to proceed, Song apologises to the others for allowing them to enter the room. As the leader, he is responsible for all of the deaths that have occurred thus far. Before they can continue talking, however, the statue reveals an altar before them, with the third and final rule written on the statue, telling them to prove their faith it's clear they need to provide a sacrifice. One of the hunters, Kim, pulls out a sword and tells Song that as leader he needs to take responsibility. Once Song gets to the middle, a flame appears, making Song wonder what it is now. He asks to see the altar, and once he enters the circle along with Song, more flames appear. He urges the others to enter the circle along with him. It must have some connection to getting out. Despite its difficulty, every dungeon has a way out, then being built that way. Jinna, on the other hand, finds herself visiting her mother yet again today. She explains everything that has happened recently, but she gets no response, her mother being in a coma. During this, the other members of Sung's party enter the circle as well, which opens the doors. The statues then start moving towards them, but stop once they are looked at. Sung informs everyone to look at the statues, telling them they can only stay alive if they stare at them. One of the hunters gets scared, however, and runs to the door, making it out alive. 
The other hunters think about their families not wanting to die, after the first more hunters start to run out, until Song, Juhi, Kim and Sung are the only ones who remain. As they stare at the statues, Blue's flames around them tick down, making it seem like a timer. Sung informs the others that as long as they stay alive within the circle before it counts down, they will survive. Kim, however, can't take this, so he runs out, leaving only the three left. Song offers to the others to stay as the sacrifice, however, Juhi gets too scared to run away. Sung notices the statues getting closer, and time is running out, so he urges Song to take Juhi and run. Juhi protests this, however, Song knocks her out and says goodbye to Sung. Sung doesn't give up, however, holding his sword and stealing his resolve. He tries to resist, however, the statues are too strong, chopping Sung up piece by piece. As he sits on death's door, Sung only wishes to have been stronger so he could provide for his family. He tries to let out a final scream but gets stabbed through the heart before he can. Sung gets enraged at the thought of everyone who left him in the dungeon, selfishly choosing their own lives. The statues then throw Sung up, forcing him to land on the altar and fill it with blood. Just as the statues swing their sword to finally end, Sung, the last blue flame, goes out. Following this, Sung completes a hidden quest and receives a screen asking if he will become a player. He then wakes up in the hospital, remembering him officially becoming a player. He inspects his arms and legs and is stunned to find them still intact. He wonders how he was able to survive such a dungeon, thinking it must have been a dream. Following this, however, two hunters enter the room from something called the surveillance team. They question him about what happened inside, informing him he was as Ju Heap for three days. Although some survived, hunters like Song are still missing an arm, and Ju He is depressed in her room. Sung remembers what happened inside and is asked by the hunter how he survived. When the White Tiger Guild, a top five guild of Japan, arrived, they found Sung outside the dungeon with it nowhere to be found. Despite there being no contents of what happened inside, all the stories add up, making Sung the most suspicious, him surviving. The hunter gets to the point and asks Sung if he experienced a double awakening, giving him the power to make it out of the dungeon. Sung thinks about this possibility with excitement, but once he re-evaluates his skills, it's still the lowest of the lows. With only a magical measurement of 10, he ranks 60 points below even the weaker E ranks. Sung, on the other hand, wonders what the thing in front of him is, the others not noticing it. Sung inspects it and remembers becoming a player when on deathbed. Once he inspects the window, his sister enters, asking why he has to always end up in the hospital. Sung smiles at her complaining and asks if she can see the window screen he is seeing. He starts talking crazy, asking his sister how he can read window screens in online games. He gives him a hint to figuring out the window screen, allowing him to further inspect it. He finds various notifications, one of which telling him he needs to do some daily training. He inspects it and decides to just put off training, not wanting to get out of bed. The chairman's assistant talks on the phone with him, informing him Sung is not reawakened. Go tells him that he would have thought someone who made it out of that would be reawakened. The guildmaster of the Hunter Guild, on the other hand, talks with Hunter Char about her becoming a raid team leader. He informs her that with them being the strongest guild in the country, they need to make the hunters they have as strong as they can be. The day ticks by until it hits midnight, and Sung gets punished for not fulfilling his daily training requirements. He thinks it's an earthquake originally, but once he looks around, he realises he needs to start training. Being transported into a desert filled with centipedes, he is forced to run for his life. Sung runs and runs eventually inspecting his window to wonder how he is supposed to survive for four hours. He eventually runs out of stamina, however he makes it just in time to get teleported back to his room. Once he re-enters the room, the nurses that are in charge of overlooking him wonder how he got all sweaty. Sung decides to actually take this training seriously going forward, making sure to get it done each day. Juhi, on the other hand, is asked to participate in a raid despite her retirement. With hunters being needed to fight sometimes, the hunter's borough is forced to ask even retired hunters to help. While on the phone, the man informs her that Sung has woken up so she pays him a visit. Once she arrives at the hospital, she finds Sung outside running around. Sung, on the other hand, gets stat points as he completes these daily training requirements. With these points, he is able to use them to increase his states, making him stronger. One of the day's rewards was a mystery box containing a hidden key. He inspects it and learns the key activates a hidden dungeon just for him. Sung inspects it and decides that he will use this second chance at life to become stronger. Following this, he visits his mother before embarking on a journey to the hidden dungeon. Sung remembers the day that his mother passed out, being ill with a disease called Eternal Shoheep. Once the gates first opened, some people were unable to deal with the mana presence, putting them into a coma or Eternal Shoheep. 
Because of this, Sung was forced to work his hardest to pay for his mother's bills and provide for his sister. Being evaluated as an E-ranked hunter, however, he was forced to constantly put his life in jeopardy. Being so weak, he was victim to any and all hunters bullying, despite how weak. With this second chance, however, Sung and newfound power, he has decided to head into the dungeon. Upon entering the key into the key lock, it opens a gate just for Sung, changing the entirety of the surroundings. With the dungeon being an instant dungeon, Sung's exit is sealed off, forcing him to find another way to escape. He then receives a notification informing him that he can only leave once he finds a teleportation circle or defeats the boss. Sung decides to man up and head into the dungeon by himself, wondering if he has what it takes. Then suddenly his worst enemy appears, a low-level goblin. This time, however, Sung has done push-ups every day, so he has the strength to evade their attack. Thanks to his experience as a hunter, always evading Sung is able to avoid getting injured despite his low rank. He dodges one of the goblin's attacks and is able to deliver a counter-strike, giving him the confidence to slay the other two. After defeating three of the weakest mobs, he experiences a reality check with a wolf emerging from behind. It instantly shatters his weapon and forces Sung to start shaking head to toe. Sung, however, remembers what he went through and tells himself it's not nearly as bad. The wolf jumps at him, but to Sung's surprise, he's able to jump around like a spider. He decides this time he won't allow his weakness get the better of him, throwing a random punch. Somehow the punch connects and reveals to Sung that he has drastically improved already. The wolf, however, doesn't let up, charring at Sung even angrier than before. Sung realises that he still isn't strong enough to defeat the wolf, so he attempts to run. The wolf stops him, however, making Sung think fast. He wonders how he can possibly defeat the wolf, ultimately remembering the system he is gifted with. He pulls out Mr. Song's sword, which he retrieved within the dungeon. After defeating this wolf, it gives him the confidence to take out the remaining wolves. He swings the sword, however the wolf finally uses its steel fangs in battle. It blocks the strike, but Sung doesn't let this stop him, telling himself nothing compares to what he has been through. The wolf recognises how much of a Chad Sung now is so it fjuhis. Having defeated Wolf Sung's level has increased, making him much stronger. He inspects his screen and decides to allocate all of the build-up stat points he has acquired. He realises there that he is different from other hunters, him having the ability to level up. He then decides to loot the wolf bodies, finding gold and items rather than magical crystals. Sung eventually stumbles upon the shop and sells his wolf fangs, earning him 20 coins. Although he has access to the shop, he is still too weak to buy anything, so he is forced to continue killing wolves. Sung decides that he will continue to kill monsters until he either finds the teleportation circle or runs low on stamina. After he says this, a horde of wolves approach, showing Sung it's time for battle. He swings his sword relentlessly, all the while evading any incoming attacks the wolves might have. Sung remembers all the dungeons he has been through and efforts he has made to provide. This fuels the flame within him, allowing Sung to awaken a side of him he never has before. He finally becomes a true hunter, showing the wolves who the prey is. While Sung battles this dungeon, another gate nearby starts to leak, showing it is on the brink of exploding. Sung, on the other hand, finishes off all of the wolves, causing his sword to be on its last life. Having acquired the teleportation stone, Sung considers backing out of the dungeon, but decides to stick around, knowing he might never get another chance like this. Sung wonders if he can defeat the boss or not, eventually deciding to at least take a peek at it. During this, however, Juhi walks to the gate where the dungeon is close to outbreaking when she receives a call from the Hunters Association. He informs her that the dungeon has already experienced a gate breach, causing the monsters to erupt out of the dungeon. Juhi decides to head over there. After killing all the wolves, they have become too easy, now making Song want to fight the boss. He weighs his options, but ultimately decides if he needs to use the escape, he can use the teleportation stone during the boss fight. As he continues to fight, he encounters different monsters until there is only one left remaining. With the plate above the enemy's head depicting the rank of the enemy, Sung knows if the boss is dark red, he can't defeat it. With his level coming to a halt and the sword almost broken, Sung finally decides to head inside the boss room. With seemingly endless stairs, Sung arrives at the bottom of the station, but sees no boss in sight. Suddenly, however, something comes dashing through the water and instantly breaks Sung's sword. Appearing before him is a large snake that has an orange-coloured name. With this knowledge, Sung thinks he can defeat it, so he charges in. Swiping its attack to the side, Sung hangs on for his life as the snake continues to attack. He gets hit into the water and pushed back even further by the snake the second he tries to get up. Following this attack, the snake throws a train at Sung, almost ending his life. Sung, however, decided to stop being such a weakling and continue his attack. During this, he remembers when Mr. Song informed him of the nickname going around, the weakest hunter. 
Song knows what it's like to be at the bottom, so when he is given a second chance, he makes sure to not waste it. Because he was looked down upon so much, Sung has earned balls of steel, allowing him to always survive. After the double dungeon, Sung has vowed to make use of his second chance, so he charges in again, determined to not give up. Although it seems impossible, Sung eventually wakes up and releases his inner strength. Compared to the statue, this snake is nothing he thinks, slashing away at its scales. Although it takes time, Sung is eventually able to get in close and land an attack. Thanks to his recently upgraded strength, Sung crushes the snake from within, marking the start of the world's greatest hunter. Sung realises he has become stronger, so he decides to finally take a break from hunting. Upon killing the snake, Sung receives a sword that is twice as good as his previous one, with the added effects of paralysis. Sung then walks out of the station smelling like trash, having fought monsters the past couple days. As he walks, a military man notices him and informs him of the current situation. Sung is guided past dead monsters, revealing a dungeon break has happened nearby. Sung decides to scan the area to which he finds a large golem-like monster. The hunters fight, but are unable to deal much damage, them all being low ranks. Sung notices how trash they are and realises what the issue is. Because of their strong tank, the fight has become a standstill, with the damage dealers unable to break the golem's defences. Among these hunters is Juhi, who despite a weak passing since the double dungeon has still not overcome it. Sung decides to step in, him having become stronger recently. As the other hunters start to panic, Sung throws his broken sword, destroying the defence of the golem. The other hunters then run in and are able to easily defeat it, making only the higher rank hunters suspicious. The tanker wonders who threw that dagger, him being the only one who noticed it. He realises that whoever did throw it must have been a high ranking hunter, so he asks who threw it. Having seen how strong the golem is, the hunter realises that the only explanation is a high ranking hunter destroyed it. Later that week, Sung is talked about by the nurses, wishing they could talk to Sung more because of his Shuhik body. Sung, on the other hand, doesn't take much notice when the nurses enter his room, Sung being classified as a badass now. Having defeated the boss of his own gate, Sung is overconfident now, telling the nurse he is ready to leave. As he walks out, the nurse tries to get his contact information without realising who she is asking. Later that day, an S-rank hunter named Beck takes an interview with a TV company. She questions him about his guild, him being the guildmaster of a top five guild, White Tiger. Beck then explains that because of his previous job as a firefighter, he is able to train more easily. Jinnah watches this until she eventually goes to tell her brother she is leaving. She notices Sung's body and asks what happened to which Sung doesn't reveal anything. Despite getting taller and achieving a perfect body, Sung still takes care of his sister like she was his own. Sung finally notices his own muscles and wonders if he keeps putting points into strength, will he become a bodybuilder? He knows he can't do this, so he looks at the rest of his stats, wondering what to upgrade. He decides to upgrade his perception, but is interrupted when his landlord calls. He tells Sung it's time to pay rent, asking why he always has to call him for payment. Sung realises that if he was able to provide by killing a goblin a day, he should easily be able to pay rent now. He decides to scroll through dungeons to find which one he could enter, ultimately finding a C-rank dungeon open to taking even the weakest hunters. He heads to the site and is greeted by a group of hunters who tell Sung he is famous. They remind him of his nickname, but Sung doesn't seem to mind, him being much stronger now. The group informs him that he won't be doing anything, only joining the party to fill the minimum count. He informs Sung that he will be paid for simply carrying the bags, then willing to do all the work. With two C ranks and a D rank, Sung wonders if they will be strong enough to clear the dungeon by themselves. He ultimately decides to sign the contract, signing his life away. Following this, another hunter named Jinho approaches with a fully equipped set of armour. Despite him being only D rank, he has millions worth of gear making Sung wonder what his deal is. As they walk, Jinho rambles to Sung about various things eventually arriving at the gate. With the size being larger than a normal C rank, the hunters wonder if they will be able to defeat it. Sung, however, informs the others that the size doesn't matter, it's the magical output that determines the rank. Following this, everyone heads inside but are surprised to find not a single monster. Once they head inside, they walk deeper within the dungeon eventually to a fork in the road. Despite there being no monsters around, Sung is able to sense them thanks to his added perception. He informs them of the location of the monsters, telling them to watch out from above. With this, the fight begins, and the hunters get to work, killing all the bugs. Huang, the leader of the group, uses a skill drawing the attention of all the hunters, giving the others an opening to easily farm them down. With the momentum in their court, Hong commands his squad to continue slaughtering the monsters, 
Sung, on the other hand, gets angry for letting the others take his prey, showing his true hunter's nature. Everyone then goes to loot the monsters, while Huang questions Sung on how he knew where the monsters were coming from. Following this, another hunter informs Huang that there is a higher-ranked monster that preys on the same monsters. Sung notices their shady activity and tells Jinho to stay cautious, now knowing what could come next. The group then ventures around the dungeon, looking for the boss room. Sung notices the group advancing forward and realises something is up, them not having a healer in their party. He doesn't say anything, but Sung knows that the hunters with them are definitely planning something. They eventually arrive at the boss room and find not only the boss, but a huge amount of mana crystals. With the total crystals adding up to the billions, Jinho decides to try and make sure Song gets a cut of the profits. He asks for his contract, then goes and asks Huang about the profits. He asks if he will share the crystals with Sung, to which he agrees, telling him they need to kill the boss first, however. Huang asks where the tools are, and upon learning they only have a couple, he decides to go grab the rest. Huang informs Sung and Jinho that they will be right back, only leaving to get the tools. Jinho protests, but they are forced to comply with the other hunters being higher rank. Following this, once the hunters leave, they destroy the exit, trapping Sung within to fight the boss. After this large explosion, the previously Asjuheap boss wakes up revealing Huang's plan. He plans to let Sung and Jinho die so they can take all the loot for themselves. Little do they know, however, Sung is among the two trapped within. Sung steps forward and pulls out his new dagger informing Jinho he will take care of things from here. Once the hunters leave the gate, they talk amongst each other, wondering what to do with all the prophets. Huang informs them that once the spider eats them, it will go back to Shuheep, giving them a chance to mine the mana crystals. Huang tells them, even if they fail to mine the mana crystals, they can simply loot Jinho's body to take his gear. Huang decides to search him up to find who Jinho is, learning he is the son of the Yu family. Sung, on the other hand, informs Jinho to back up and let him work his magic. Jinho protests, obviously, knowing Sung is nothing more than a worthless E rank. With this knowledge, Sung thinks of his previous opponents, only having defeated up to a D rank boss thus far. Sung decides, however, that with his current stats, he should be able to handle the boss. Chairman Go, on the contrary, is seen within his car, complaining about how many people want his attention. His assistant tells him he has a bit of free time, asking for a quick duel. During this, Sung goes in to strike the boss, however it hides it too tough to pierce. With each movement, it makes Jinho wonder who Sung truly is. He considers Sung being a false ranker, someone who hides their rank to kill other hunters in the dungeon. With Sung's bloodthirsty eyes, Jinho wonders how a rich kid like him ended up in this situation. While fighting, Sung decides to make use of his dagger's abilities, paralysis and drain. He charges in to try and get in a hit, but the spider reveals another hidden move, acid spray. Sung knows he needs to start taking the fight seriously, so he uses his skill dash. He gets in close, but the spider's defence is still too strong to penetrate. Because of this, Sung runs faster than ever before, making his fatigue higher than ever. His fatigue gets the best of him, allowing the spider to knock him down. Sung, however, remembers he has a full recovery skill still from his daily quest, so he uses it. With super speed and a full recovery ability, Sung makes quick work of the spider, showing Jinho what it means to be a hunter. Following this, he goes to loot the boss, which makes Jinho sure that Sung is a false ranker. In fear of his life, Jinho starts to meat ride Sung, offering him water and getting to work on the crystals. Following this, however, Huang gets back and is surprised to find Sung still alive. Chairman Go, on the other hand, despite being in his older years, is still able to overpower his A-rank assistant, Jin Chul. Go, on the other hand, feels weaker than ever, telling Jin Chi he used to be much stronger. The two talk about the past, saying a hunter's true nature is revealed within a dungeon. During this, Huang informs Jinho and Song that they are going to die here. Huang gives Jinho a chance, however, offering to let him live if he kills Sung for him. Jinho hesitates, however, knowing Sung is much stronger than he is. Jinho eventually goes over to Sung, and instead of attacking Sung, he stands in front of him, offering to protect him. With this, Huang orders his men to kill them both. Sung then receives a quest telling him to kill those who have increased bloodlust towards him. He looks at the quest and receives a blow from one of the hunters, knocking him back. Sung lays in the rubble and questions why the system is forcing him to kill others. He realises that he has become too arrogant up until now, relying on the system too much. Sung decides to obey the system, getting back up in front of Huang. They look at him and wonder how the weakest hunter is able to survive an attack from a C-rank. Sung, however, seems to not care anymore, approaching the hunters slowly. He tells them they should be ready to be hunted, revealing his true nature. One of the hunters approaches confidently, however Sung slices his head off, showing he means business. 
The other hunters notice this and wonder how an E-rank can kill someone of their level. Having just killed someone, Song wonders if he made the right decision. However, once the other hunters approach, he becomes sure of his strength, mowing down each of the hunters. With just a single stab, they are paralysed and put into a weaker state. After finishing all the hunters, Huang is the only one remaining. He tells Sung, however, he is unlike the other hunters, powering himself up with enhancement. He thinks of his skills, but ultimately decides there is no way Sung can overpower him. Sung, however, makes his efforts seem completely useless, with Sung informing him he is unlike any other. With the power to level up, Sung has no limits giving him the talent to be the strongest. Sung informs Huang of this, and tells him that a hunter doesn't let their prey live, slicing his head off as well. Following this, Sung is forced to evacuate the gate, closing around 30 minutes after the boss is defeated. After clearing this gate, Sung receives a new skill, Bloodlust. With this, he is able to half the opponent's skills in half, making him even stronger than before. After the dungeon, Jin Ho thanks Sung for saving him, knowing he would have died otherwise. The next day, Jin Shul receives a report of Sung's recent activities. Not only did he survive the double dungeon, but he also survived the gate where Huang's entire party died, Sung on the other and gets home to be welcomed by his sister. She asks him how he has been making so much money recently without getting any injuries. She tells Sung to stay careful, which causes Sung to think about killing Huang's party. He for some reason doesn't feel bad about killing them at all, making him wonder if it's because of his increase in levels. He knows regardless he needs to continue getting stronger. Once he takes a sip of his beer, he receives a notification informing him the alcohol has been detoxified. Sung decided to continue drinking the beers to see if he can get wasted, but he has no such luck. He finally inspects his skills, to which he finds a skill he has never seen before. It tells him that all poisons and diseases will be detoxified to keep him safe. Sung then lies down depressed, he can't get drunk, but gets woken up by his sister, informing him he has a guest. He then heads with Jin Ho to a cafe where they talk about their future. Jin Ho asks Sung to help him with his future raids in order to become a guildmaster. Following this, Sung agrees to hear him out, to which Jin Ho explains why he needs his help. To become a guildmaster, one must complete 20 raids, meaning Jin Ho needs help to quickly clear them. He belongs to the Yu family, a rich family that is hoping to establish a guild and make a name in the hunter's world. With all modern technologies using items found in dungeons, Jin Ho's father has decided to try and recruit an S-rank to lead them. Jin Ho then informs him that he wants to prove to his father that he can be of use, hence establishing his own guild. Jin Ho informs him that if he had access to the items within the guild, even if he was a small guild, he would help. Sure that Sung is higher ranked than E, Jin Ho decides to offer a $30 billion building in exchange for his help in the next 19 raids. Sung thinks about this, but ultimately declines his offer, telling him it's too risky to expose himself. Jin Ho then tries to persuade Sung by promising to not reveal his secret identity, but this doesn't work. During this, an S-rank hunter overseas in the US hears about his younger brother's death. This is the brother of Huang, Previously a South Korean citizen, he fled to the US because it's bigger. He asks his assistant what the government could do if he went to South Korea and killed everyone involved with his brother's death. He believes that either Sung or Jin Ho are responsible for killing his younger brother. Sung on the flip side decides to bring his sister along with him for his morning training. As they continue to run, he eventually gets tired of her slowness, so he dashes off ahead. Sung ends up going 1km over his normal goal, revealing there might be a hidden reward. As he continues to do more of the exercises required for his daily quest, the numbers start going up. He eventually caps it out at twice the normal limit, giving him access to a secret quest. Instead of his normal random box, he receives a cursed box holding a key. Upon inspection, he learns it is a key to something called the Demon King's Castle, which holds the elixir of life as a clear reward. Sung decides to take on the quest despite its S-rank difficulty in order to try and save his mother. He knows, however, that this dungeon won't be easy so he decides to leave right away if anything goes wrong. Sung doesn't get scared, even when the three-headed Cerberus appears before him. Despite using his strongest skills and striking it multiple times, the monster takes little to no damage. The monster then fights back and chomps into his arm, ripping it clean off. Sung continues to get attacked, forcing his HP to lower by the second. The beast then uses a skill to double its stats, making Sung realise he has no chance at victory. He uses his full recovery he saved in an attempt to fight back, but the beast continues showing no signs of weakness. Sung gets brought down below half HP again, making his stats boost thanks to a passive skill. This gives him the strength to knock the beast back, but he is still severely injured. With no other option, Sung decides to use the teleportation stone, however the beast knocks it out of his hands. Sung gets away and decides to buy some potions from the shop. 
After using all his coins, he regenerates barely enough HP to go on, forcing him to think of another plan. He remembers the other reward from the previous dungeon, a potion containing a skill boost. Sung drinks this, and it gives him the edge to advance closer to the beast and land a strike. He doesn't stop here, however, slicing up as much as he can on the beast. The beast strikes back, however, bringing Sung to around 5% HP left with him trapped in his jaws. Sung doesn't give up despite his situation and strikes the beast into the eye as many times as he can. After using all of his remaining energy, Sung is able to defeat yet another impossible boss giving him a level up. After defeating the monster, he receives another key giving him access to the tower containing the Demon King's castle. He also receives a recipe book for the Elixir of Life containing various items he doesn't have but giving him hope at saving his mother. Sung decides to leave the dungeon and tackle it another day. He visits his mother and inspects the recipe for the elixir of life, reading that it can cure any disease. With four main ingredients, it's clear the only way to acquire the elixir is to defeat the demons within the flaming tower. Sung then decides to meet back up with Jinho and give him some good news. He tells him he will be helping him with 19 raids, however, on one condition. Sung explains that they will do the same thing Huang did, hiring people to do nothing. Sung tells him they will be the only two going inside the dungeon, him not wanting to be discovered. Hunter Char, on the other hand, is seen running around at a track. With her divine beauty, she sits down and asks the man behind her what he needs. The man introduces himself as a Yu construction member, inviting her to join their guild. During this, Jin Ho meets with his father to talk about the future of their company. His father informs him that they need strong hunters not only to deal with getting materials but also their protection. With the government having little to no power nowadays, the guilds rule the world, holding all the power. Within South Korea, there are five major guilds, the Hunter's Guild, White Tiger Guild, Reaper Guild, Fame Guild, and the Knight's Guild. With them holding the most high-ranked hunters, they are able to monopolise a majority of the resources within gates. Knowing this, Jin Ho is told by his father that the establishment of a top guild is vital for their business. Jin Ho wonders if he will be able to meet his father's expectations despite his low rank. Sung, on the contrary, tries to exceed the daily limit again but sees no such change. He wonders if he can get something from the Blessed Mystery Box, but receives nothing more than a bingo sheet. Sung wonders how he can level up effectively and thinks of going to the penalty zone. During this, he receives a text from the Hunters Association asking him to participate in a D-rank raid. Mr. Song also receives a text asking him to participate in the raid despite him losing an arm. Kim, another hunter who was within the double dungeon, receives a text asking him to participate in this raid as well. Bake, the leader of the White Tiger Guild on the other hand, talks to the Hunter Guildmaster. He asks why he had to do such a dumb interview, telling him he set him up. Bake informs him he will forget about this, wondering why he called him there. The Hunter's Guildmaster shows a paper containing the Yujin Construction Group's plans on establishing a guild. Juhi, on the other hand, is still yet to recover and attend dungeons since the double dungeon. As a B-rank, Juhi should be able to make lots of money, causing her mother to get angry at her for sitting around all day. Juhi gets frustrated with her comment and hangs up only to see that she gets a text for the raid as well. After Bake yells at the Hunter's Guild, Master Hunter Char enters the room. She informs him of Eugene's scouting. Bake, on the other hand, thinks about his conversation with the Guildmaster. Previously, they launched an attack on Juju Island, containing one of the first S-rank gates. Despite their efforts, the dungeon didn't get cleared and claimed the life of many hunters, leaving the island uninhabitable. Before he takes his next sip, Bake thinks about all the people he lost during the raid. On the other hand, a man is seen asking another to kill some people at all costs, showing a bag of money. Following this, Sung heads out to the dungeon he was called for leaving Gina to fend for herself. Once he arrives to the dungeon, he finds Mr. Song, who is stunned to see Sung's recent development. With his limbs back intact and him changing drastically in appearances, Song asks what happened. Sung dodges the question and becomes enraged once he sees the other hunters participating. As if it was destined for them to be reunited, Sung finds the two who left him to die within the dungeon. With Juhi being there as well, she gets excited to see Sung's new appearance. Following this, a van approaches a group of criminals. The criminals try to speak, but a hunter's associate stops them, revealing he is watching over the hunters. In South Korea, the government has passed a law where imprisoned hunters are allowed to participate in raids to lower their sentences. Overlooking the criminals is B-rank Hunter Kung, an experienced assassin. Kang then removes the handcuffs on the criminals and reminds them if they act out, he will kill them instantly. Kang then introduces himself to the others and informs them that they will have an easy day. He asks who will be the leader of the raid to which Song asks if he can be. 
Sung accepts him and this makes Song happy for forgiving him. They then get ready and head into the dungeon, unknown to what awaits them. Once they enter, a group of goblins approach, making the amount of participants seem overkill. Everyone does their part in defeating monsters, including Sung, who receives no damage at all despite all the fighting. Juhi tells him that it's a relief to not have to heal him, it is always annoying. Song notices that his appearance isn't the only thing that has changed, him carrying a stronger aura as well. They eventually arrive at a fork in the road with pathways leading to different directions. Instantly, Sung is able to identify which room the boss is in, suggesting Song and Juhi head that direction. As they walk in, Sung notices something strange going on with Kang. Kim and the other hunter head in their own direction, Kim telling him that once they clear the gate, he will apologise. He expresses how bad he feels for leaving Sung, wondering if he will forgive him even if he apologise. They continue forward while Kang watches over the criminals kill goblins. He asks them if they could kill humans like they do with goblins, remembering his client. With the criminals having assaulted his daughter leading to her suicide, the man seems heartbroken, offering Kang three billion to kill the criminals. This leads us to the present, where Kang's real goal is to kill the criminals. Kim continues down the path he finds Kang in the act, finishing off the last criminal. This reveals the two paths are connected, forcing Kang to decide to kill everyone. Sung, on the other hand, overhears the screaming, so he rushes to the other side. After arriving, one of the hunters is dead, and Kim is on his deathbed. Sung orders Juhi to heal him, not wanting his reason for revenge to die. Song recognises them as weapon slashes, wondering who could do this to him. Kim, on the other hand, tells the others to forget him, thinking he isn't going to make it. Kim then apologises to Sung with his final words, making Sung wonder what his reason for becoming so strong was. Watching over this is Kang, who dashes in an attempt to take off Juhi's head. Sung stops this attack with ease, revealing to the other hungers who's behind the killings. Kang, however, reports that he will make this all a cover-up, telling the association he was the only to survive. Song then walks forward and prepares to face off against Kang, despite their difference in rank. Kang, however, takes this as disrespect, rushing in to take out Song. Song displays his sword skills except because of his given talent. Magic, he is completely worthless in battle. Kang lands a strike on Song, but it is healed instantly by Juhi, showing they might have a chance. Song tells Kang that he has trained S-rank hunters, a simple B-rank not being enough to take him out. Kang then amps up his speed and puts Song on his knees, ready to be finished off. Song then uses his magic to try and blast Kang, but with his speed, Kang easily evades it. He goes in to deliver the final blow, however the E-rank hunter Sung somehow delects his attack. After stopping a head-on attack and stopping him earlier, Kang reveals that he clearly isn't an E-rank. He asks why he has hidden his power, noticing even his party members weren't aware of his strength. Kang then concludes that it must be a second awakening, something that happens rarely to hunters. This still doesn't add up to Kang how he survived the double dungeon, so he decides to find out. He informs them that he originally killed the criminals because of their actions, but then was forced to kill the others. Sung asks him why he killed the others, to which Kang reveals that he isn't in the Hunters Association because he stands for justice. Kang simply likes to kill people, and the Hunters Association lets him get away with it. Knowing that he knows this now, Kang dives in and reveals a speed incomparable to before. With equally matched speed, Sung thinks he has the upper hand, however Kang shows his experience. Kang lands a strike and flexes, causing Sung to get a hidden quest, telling him to kill his enemy like before. He then activates his skills and runs in to land a blow that poisons Kang. Kang is then forced to use his secret skill, stealth, completely hiding his location. Kang reveals that among hunters, only a select few are able to wield the stealth skill. Out of all the people who have seen this skill, no one has made it out alive. Sung, however, shows no fear, healing himself completely and telling Kang it's time to get serious. Kang notices the look in his eyes and asks if he has killed people before as well. Sung doesn't answer, revealing that he has, making Song wonder what he has been through since the double dungeon. Kang then continues to strike, but his every move is easily predicted by Sung. Then once Kang gets close, Sung activates one of his skills, rendering Kang completely immobile. He wonders how someone can wield healing abilities, assassin-like speed and debuffs. Despite losing, Kang tells him that fate will catch up to him one day, telling him not to let his shadow overcome his light. He informs Sung that the longer he stares into the abyss, the longer it will stare back at him. Sung realises here that although he has gotten stronger, something within him is changing, making him feel less and less human. Sung then informs the others that he will clear the rest of the dungeon himself, urging them to wait outside.
Jinchul, the chairman's assistant, then arrives at the scene and is stunned to see Sung's recent appearance. He approaches the three and asks how they were able to defeat Kang, him being on the higher end of B ranking. Song informs him he did it, telling Jinshul he had the help of Ju He, the B rank healer. Jinshul, however, doesn't believe this, knowing there is no way a C rank mage can defeat a B rank assassin. Three hours after the gate was cleared, the man who hired Kang was arrested. Sung, on the other hand, goes to meet with Ju He for one last time before she retires as a hunter. She expresses that although she is rank B, she still chose to do rank D and E dungeons. Through this, the two were able to meet, and Ju He started off always healing Sung. She reminds him of the time when he promised to take her out in the double dungeon. She tells him to invite her out next time he's back in their hometown. As she walks away, Sung realises that he still isn't strong enough. He meets up with Jinshul later that day, who tells him he knows he has reawakened. He tells him that he doesn't care what his reasons for hiding his strength is, but he does need to be on the lookout. He informs Sung that S-rank hunter Dong Su, the brother of Huang, is coming for his blood. Sung acts like he didn't slaughter his brother in cold blood, asking Jinchul why he would be after him. Jinchul tells him it's because they were in the same dungeon and that the law doesn't apply to S ranks. As he is leaving, he gives his last words of advice, urging Sung to fuhi the country with his family. Sung, on the other hand, pays no mind to this, going to raid a dungeon the next day. Jinho introduces their team filled with injured people, drunks and even a kid. Because you must have ten total raid members, they are there to just sit around. The high school girl then approaches Sung and tells him not to belittle her, her being a hunter as well. Sung tells her to just sit outside and keep her mouth shut while he does the work. One of the randoms asks if they can really clear the dungeon to which Jin Ho reminds them of the payment to sit around. Before entering the dungeon, Sung decides to use a rune stone to learn the skill stealth. Rune stones can be acquired by various methods, Sung getting it from Kang. Jin Ho then appears and tries to flex his armour to Sung but makes a fool of himself instead. He takes all the armour off, and the two head into the dungeon officially as a duo for the first time. The drunks outside the gate think there's no way they will clear the gate, however. When they exit, after an hour, they realise he is the real deal. Stunned, the bums ask if this is really all they need to do, wondering how long they can milk Jinho. They continue forward, clearing dungeons at an incredible rate, even for small guilds. Whether it's weak creatures or even large serpents, Sung has no problem clearing them all the while levelling up. He eventually gets strong enough to stand with the likes of high-ranked hunters. After levelling up enough, he also unlocks two new skills, advanced dagger wielding and fatal strike. Once he reaches this level, he starts to realise the skills he needs. He decides to start focusing his points on intelligence, but is interrupted when he receives a new quest. It informs him that he is now high enough level to take a class change quest. During this, a member of the White Tiger's recruitment team happens to stumble upon Sung's files. Upon inspection, he sees that Sung has somehow survived three high-kill dungeons. The manager of the team talks with his associate, explaining why he thinks Sung is reawakened. With the first dungeon being the double dungeon, claiming a majority of the party's lives, it's a miracle he even survived. Then following this, Sung was able to survive against Huang's party and now Kang. With this information, they decide to investigate the recent dungeon he has rights to. Upon arrival, he sees all the bums hanging around and becomes sure of Sung's hidden power. Following this, Sung gets back from the dungeon, asking for time off the following day. Jin Ho informs him that they have gates bought for the next day, so Sung tells him he will come up with a plan. During this time, the Hunter's Guildmaster Choi remembers the tragedies of Juju Island. With even the likes of S-rank hunters losing their lives, almost everyone that attended the raid died. Now years later, he is informed that they will be redoing the raid on Juju Island, inviting him to attend. Later that night on his way home, Sung is approached by the manager of the White Tiger Guild, offering him a position at the company. He proudly offers double whatever Eugene is giving him, so Sung asks how much the White Tiger HQ is worth. He informs him it's worth 60 billion, to which the manager realises he can't afford Sung. Sung tells him that if he can't afford it, then it's a waste of time. Before he leaves, Sung makes sure to question the manager how he knows about his strength. Just to show he's serious, Sung disappears with stealth and inflicts a small cut on him. The manager informs him that through his own research he found out about Sung, telling him it's nothing too serious. Sung continues to press this man, telling him if he leaks anything regarding him he will assume it's him. He then apologises for monopolising the C-rank gates and offers a trade instead. Sung offers to sell the dungeons for 200 million when they are typically much lower because of the abundance of them. The manager tries to protest, but eventually agrees after Sung reminds him of his strength. Then he offers a potion to heal his wound. 
deceiving the manager into thinking he has healing and assassin type abilities. After he leaves, the manager realises how strong Song really is, him holding the power to shake the present hunter world. The following day, when the manager goes to look at Gates, he realises he has been fooled by Song. With Jin Ho not buying any Gates today, the average price dropped to around 10 million. The manager realises that he needs to take this much more seriously if he wants to recruit Sung. After finishing up all of his duties, Sung prepares to head into the job change quest, knowing the difficulty will be high based on previous dungeons. Despite this, however, Sung knows he must move forward if he wants to get stronger. With this in mind, he accepts the quest, thus entering the dungeon. Once he gets inside, he realises that he forgot to do his daily quest, putting it off for after this quest. Upon entering, Sung receives a window screen informing him that the use of potions is restricted within the dungeon. Following this, an armoured knight approaches, ready for blood. Sung is a new man, however, so he doesn't back down, instead striking across its breastplate. To his surprise, however, it deals no damage, forcing him to try again at a different spot. Sung decides if his dagger won't work, then he will simply overpower it, leading to him ripping its helmet off. After defeating the first knight, tons more approach, showing that was just the start. Jin Hu, on the other hand, meets with his father and brother to discuss the guild. Jin Hu's brother informs his father that he is making steady arrangements at recruiting S rank hunters for their guild. Jin Hu's brother then tells him to give up on trying to establish his own guild, telling him he will found the Yujin guild. During this, Sung continues to run rampant on the knights, showing no weaknesses against any of them. Then suddenly an assassin emerges using the stealth skill followed by a mage. With these higher level enemies, Sung begins to wonder if he really will be able to beat this quest. During his fight, he deducts all the weaknesses to each of the different classes, using his various skills to overpower them. Out of the enemies, however, he struggles to defeat the mage, him having no long range attacks. Despite this, however, Sung perseveres, overpowering all of the enemies in front of him. He then receives various items for defeating the knights, giving him an overall stat boost. He then rests for a bit to recover his stamina, eventually arriving at a large door holding what Sung thinks to be the boss. After opening the door, a fast gust rushes by, giving him a chill down his spine. Then once he enters the room, the door closes behind him, revealing an empty throne. Standing behind this empty throne is a red knight named Igris, the knight commander. With a dark red name, Sung realises despite his growth, this monster is much stronger. Then, without warning, Igris charges in and slices the pillar next to him in half. Igris follows this with a series of sword strikes, pushing Sung back on the defensive. He realises how strong Igris is, and wonders if he will ever be able to defeat it. Following this, he charges in to try and land some attacks, however Igris counters, by slamming their sword on his head. Sung reveals that stat-wise they are similar in speed, but Igris's strength is much higher. Before we continue, let's take a moment to answer the question of the day. Have you read the manhua? If so, are you excited for the next episode? Comment down below for a chance to be shouted out in the next video. Now back to the recap. With no other choice, Sung decides to fight Igris barehanded, thinking he will never pierce his armour. Igris follows suit and does the same, dropping not only his sword but his daggers as well. During this, Chairman Go meets with Jin Hul, who informs him it is time to start their operation. Following this, he calls the Guildmaster of the Hunter's Guild, Choi, who stands ready with his team, Go thanks him for pushing the public so much to raid Juju Island, knowing it is a dangerous zone. Getting back to the good stuff, we see Sung getting absolutely bodied by Egris even in hand-to-hand -hand combat. After getting hammered into the wall, Sung's right arm experienced an injury, forcing him on the retreat. Sung realises that he needs to get serious, so he activates his strongest skills. He then dashes in, throwing tons of punches, however Egris is still too strong, blocking his every attack. Egris then counters by slamming Sung into the ground again, making the battle seem over. Sung, however, doesn't give up, running out from the rubble and hitting a spinning kick on Egris's face. This enrages Egris, causing him to start absolutely destroying Sung in the fight. After throwing him onto the throne, Egris prepares to finish Sung off for good. During this, Gina prepares herself and Sung dinner, wondering why he hasn't come home yet. The nurse that spit some game on Sung, on the other hand, now treats his mom, hoping to get close to the family. Sung, on the contrary, is on death's bed with Egris striking Sung with his sword, ready to end it. Sung doesn't give up still, blocking the sword and dashing in with his knife, getting a cheeky hit in. He takes advantage of this cheap move by throwing Egris into the wall and resuming his dagger to strike it again. As usual, he lets his rage overtake him, striking his opponent in the face ruthlessly. After this, Egris falls to the ground and he receives the notification informing him he defeated Egris. Sung realises that Egris was superior to him in every aspect, 
him only winning for his cheap shot. He then inspects the rewards and is stunned to find an S-rank helmet that not only reduces physical damage but also boosts two other stats. Along with this he receives a rune stone and a teleportation stone. He inspects the teleportation stone and wonders why he would receive one rather than having the quest end. Following this thought, a series of gates appear, telling Sung the longer he survives, the better class he will receive. After reading this, a large number of knights begin pouring out of the gates. As he fights, it seems like there is no end to the knights, so he decides to try and hide with stealth. After using a bunch of mana to activate this, one of the magicians uses a skill to break his stealth. This forces Sung back on the attack, knocking down any knight in his way. Despite his courage, however, there are too many knights to take on, forcing Sung to pull out the teleportation stone. When he attempts to use it, the knights knock it out of his hand, making Sung left in a dire situation.